Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with your hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Arthur Bergeron. Our guest today is Framingham Fire Department Deputy Chief Jim Ahern. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron, a friend of Grace O'Donnell's. Also an attorney, I do nothing but elder law and I work at Myrick O'Connell, which is actually the biggest firm outside of Boston. Our offices are located in Westboro. Uh, because there are so many of us, there are about 70 of us, everybody does what they like, and I like this. I like doing elder law. This show, though, is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary, whom you may have seen if you've seen one of my seminars. When we talk about Frank and Mary, we're talking about them and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and talking about the fact that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. If you identify with that and you live in Framingham, you want to die in Framingham, not someplace else, and you want to live here instead of going with your kids in California and Texas, wherever they are. So this is where your friends are and it's the community that you know. So the question then is, who are the people that you need to know? What are the programs that you need to know about if you want to stay right here in Framingham? My co-host on this show is Grace O'Donnell, who directs the Callahan Center and of course finds all these great guests, people that you, who can talk about programs that are important to you. This one, by the way, is really important to you. Grace, who is our guest today? Hi, Arthur. I'm really excited to introduce you and our audience to Jim Ahern, Deputy Chief of the Framingham Fire Department. It's very exciting. Jim, thanks so much for being on the show. Oh, you're very welcome. And, but you said you're, all, you're practically a local? Right? Yes, yeah, I uh, went to Memorial in Barbaria. I actually switched and moved to Natick in, uh, for high school. That's but great. Most of, my, uh, most of my life I was here. That's great. So you know all the nooks and crannies. Right? Pretty much. You're in the fire department, so you really know the nooks and crannies. Uh, most of them. Yeah, right? <laughs> so thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. This is important. And Jim, I know along with your deputy chief title, you're also the fire marshal That's for correct. Framingham. Can you tell us a bit more about what that entails? Well, it's kind of like the name says, prevention. The fire marshal is in charge of fire prevention. Um, we're in charge of getting into the schools, elder services, things like that to help with. Um, and that's why we're here to, I'm here to discuss the SAFE program. Ah, great. Okay. And tell me a bit more about this Senior Safe program. I know it has something to do with replacing smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. It but does. I, it does. It, it, you know what? I call it more of a safety check. Everybody really wants to get in uh, free detectors or this or that, but really it's so we can get into the houses and help out. We install the detectors. Um, we have other things too. We get the detectors here with carbon monoxides, night lights. The SAFE program is great because it gives us a, a, not a lot of money, but a small grant, $2,500 to buy a bunch of detectors, things like that, where we can get into homes. And I think it makes a difference because the, uh, the, the detectors really make it, you're twice as likely to survive a fire if you have a smoke detector in your home. Statistically, the homes that don't have detectors don't do well. Yeah, the, I often hear when there is a fire, when people don't survive it, it's because they didn't have working detectors. Correct, most of the, the time too. And then. For uh, citizens over 65, and unfortunately, once you hit 65, you're twice as likely to be seriously injured in a fire. Mm. So that you're doubling. So, and that's a lot of the time because they don't have detectors. Right. You know, and oh, I see. They just happen to be in apartments and stuff that don't have Apartments them. and houses. I mean, it, to be honest, these have come down. We couldn't even get these detectors a few months back because everything's been short. But it was $109 for two detectors. Now, I don't want to spend 109 on my house, but. Most people, once you get to 65, you're thinking about retirement, you know, they're on a fixed income, they're much less likely to spend $110 on two smoke detectors. Um, but what's great about these is we try to install the ones that have carbon monoxide detectors, unless you already have carbon monoxide detectors in your home. In your home. So and, and if I could check, yeah. these batteries, I understand, are good for 10 years? The 10 years seal themselves? lithium. These, the new technology, well, it's not new. Photoelectric and ionization have been around for a long time. But really, we want a, a smoldering fire is where we want to catch the fire. The ionization picks up flaming fires a lot quicker. The photoelectric 
picks up smoldering or smoking fires. Mm. And really, I mean, 95% of people that do die in a, a fire, it's usually from smoke inhalation. Yeah. It's only like 5% that die from the actual fire. Mm. Really? Yeah, it's, it's. And I, would, and I would think that would be especially true for seniors. Oh, yes. Right? It's, because, it's, because they're the folks that, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of moving slow, they're gonna have trouble getting out. Yeah, no, and, it. And, and their lungs aren't great, you know, because you're getting to be almost as old as me, you know, you, 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 you need to <laughs> yeah. be paying attention to this. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's, that's part of it, not having them and maybe moving a, bit, a little bit slower. Like I said, to the, uh, the, the thing I try to do though when we get into these inspections is I try not to just look at, like I said, the smoke detectors. This is what everybody <laughs> comes for or this, but really what right. I want to get in to make sure like, you know, when's the last time you've had, you know, your chimney cleaned, has your furnace been okay? I ask a lot of questions and, and I actually, we have a couple of great little books that give a lot of statistics and things on how to, you know, if you have a grease fire, remember to put the lid on it. Don't, you know, we even have some, I buy some uh, fire extinguishers too for certain people because some people already have the smoke detectors in their home mm -hmm. and we really, we can't get into the hardwired ones. So if your home already has hardwired one, do we have to refer you? Have, we don't really refer anybody, but we have to try to help you get an electrician out there to, to put detectors in. Because okay. we're not, if we put it, elect, if we rewire it and it catches on fire, now we're liable. Right. right, right. But if I'm there, I can still help you out with a carbon monoxide detector. We even have the night lights too, because unfortunately, it's citizens as well over 65, three out of every 10 are gonna have a significant fall this year that they'll have to either be hospitalized for or transported to the hospital. Yeah. So. And is that do, something excuse else? Excuse me, that do that number again. Three out of three ten. Three out of ten yes. seniors, people over 65, yes. yep. are going to have some kind of fall Correct. that will lead them to be going to the hospital. Mm. Uh, usually transported to the hospital, yes. I'm going to use that, mm. right, in my yeah, seminars. That's a, that's a wonderful statistic. Oh, there's a, there's right? I mean, it's, it's a, a sad, sad statistic. statistic. It's a sad statistic. <laughs> but, but, but it just that's, makes, that's the first way I've heard it. From, yeah. okay. No, but it just makes yeah. you aware, you know, because yeah. I, t I mean, I tell seniors, so I do nothing but elder law talk. All I talk to is seniors. Yep. And, I t and of course, fr like Frank and Mary, yep. they want to stay in the house until they die. Absolutely. Right? And I tell people, you can do that, but don't fall. Well, yeah. we can help by do doing this. Do not fall. Right. Right. Because if right. you get a significant injury, now you have to. Changes everything. Yes, it does. And then if one person's living in the house, it's also a lot harder. So mm -hmm. that's why if you can keep safe, smoke detectors, things like that. Don't put debris in the stairs. Don't clutter. You know, the clutter is the big thing because people like to save stuff. A lot of stuff from kids and children. And hell, I do it. If my wife, she pops her head in my garage and she's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Get, she doesn't even go in there at all. But uh, it's the same thing for you. You know, you can even call it his garage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As opposed yeah. to her garage. She probably uses her garage all the time, right? Uh, right but not his garage, right? Yeah, so. But uh, to me, it sounds like these with those 10-year batteries oh, are even more helpful for older folks who maybe are hesitant about getting up on a step stool Correct. or a ladder to change the batteries every year. You know, we used to always recommend that. Yeah. Spring forward, fall back, change yep. your batteries. That's right. But now if they only have to do this every 10 years, that would be uh, The only much complaint easier. I've heard about this is when you do burn food, you can't just pull the battery out. Uh. <laughs> Which is a good thing though. We don't want people pulling the batteries out because most of the time they forget to put the battery back in. Again. Right. So with these you can't do that and like you said it's sealed for, for 10 years. And uh, mm -hmm. it's funny because the, the red is just the smoke detector. So if you already have carbon monoxide detectors we'll install these and the purple are the, the combos. The combination okay. uh, of the carbon monoxide and the, uh, the smoke detector. But I did have a couple of people call and I told them oh the purple ones but of course there is one purple type at Home Depot that, that aren't photoelectric. Oh, <laughs> and they found the one that wasn't, and I already got yelled at about that. So it's not always purple, it's just for this brand of, uh, you know, just so they know. Oh, okay. But you do want to look for the P for the photoelectric, because uh, okay. that's, that's code from pretty much all the detectors now. So now tell me again, at the risk of, of, of deterring people from doing this. So if it goes off, yep. so how do you shut it off? Well, you just have to clear the smoke from the home. Usually a fan, open a couple of windows, same thing that you do anyway. Mm -hmm. I see. You're gonna, it just takes a couple of minutes, that's all. So it'll self-reset once, oh, once the smoke yes. is gone. But yep. you do have to get rid of the smoke. Yes. Yeah, that sounds fair. No, so I, as you mentioned, one of the recommendations is whenever you're cooking, have a cover nearby yes. so that if it, the pan you're using is smoking, you can cover it and smolder the fire out so it's not getting oxygen. Yes. So the, or also something like baking soda. If, baking if soda does it. work as well. Yeah. I've been, it's, we've talked about it a few times and uh, the, the cover is definitely a lot better and quicker. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's probably two of the things that I talk about too when we go into the homes and say, hey, you know, have a cover if you're cooking with oil or grease, but 
not everybody really cooks with a lot of oil or grease anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I do find one thing that's it's really, I, I always talk to people about, is don't stack your mail on the stove or oh, don't stack gee. your, I, I go into a lot of homes and uh, that's probably the one thing that I squawk at people a little bit about. I go, right. you don't stack everything that you're not using on the stove. Well, I hardly ever cook. And I'm like, yeah, but this, the knobs can get bumped on. Um, you know, it, it's just don't stack anything on the stove. That's right. yeah. pretty much. Yeah, it's like a danger point. It's yes. Just a, it's, yes. Like yeah. a, it's like a real danger point. Mm -hmm. So if somebody calls you to do, first of all, like who, who do they call? Well, they call the Framingham Fire Department, yeah. the, the main line, which is 508-532-5930, which we could probably put up after them. Yeah. But oh, the, uh, well, these folks, as you know, this is Framingham. Okay. They're great. But, and we, so any kind of information that you want to have, they can, they can build it in and scroll it. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And that, that's, that's what you call the Framingham Fire Department. We are a few weeks behind now because what we do is the Chief Mike Dutcher is actually great. He allows us to work all this into our normal days if we have half an hour here or half an hour there. So the times yep. are different. We try to work with people. Sometimes it's a few weeks before we get out, but I mean, we're doing, I mean, we're doing a, quite a few, five to 10 a month, I mean, a week right now. Great. And uh, then sometimes we'll go, we'll do five in a month. But right now there actually has been quite a few the past couple of weeks. But that's not bad. I mean, because that was gonna be one of the questions. I would, yeah. I would think there'd be pretty much a, a lot of demand for this. Yeah, there How is, not as, not as much as you, You'd think. There is a good amount, though. Um, and it works out, too, because we only have two inspectors and then me and the assistant marshal. So mm -hmm. um, we, we all do them whenever we have times in between yeah. inspections or meetings. Yeah. That was good. And is there a, an age limit? I know this is known as the Senior Safe Program. So, so is it 60 yes. or 65? Because for different programs, the age the rules are different. is yeah. different. Yeah. Yes. So it, it's... It is designed for 65 okay. is the, the age. The um, youngest and then up yes. 65. Uh, we do have the, the st I've actually worked it in though a couple of times to the, uh, we have the, s the student safe and the senior safe grant. Mm -hmm. or in, uh, I've also told all the kids at school as well, so we've worked it in some ways that way. Uh, if you don't have a smoke detector at your home, let me know and I will install one. Yeah. You know, I, I try to work it in from both sides. And this, the, the schools actually get allotted more money because mm. I try to get into all of the elementaries at least. Yeah. Um, so I, I've, you know, it's supposed to be 65, but I'd be hard pressed to say no if somebody really needed a detector and yeah. they were, you know, right. having a hard time. Okay. And what else are you, when, when you go into that, you were talking a little bit about it, what else are you kind of looking for in terms of things that maybe make, maybe helping the senior involved make their own house more safe? I know you're, they're, they're, they're calling you because of this. Yeah, like I, I this just, is a great feature. It, it's yeah. tough, we're not really supposed to refer people like, cause I, you know, I'm not gonna refer, hey, you know, my name's Jim Hearn, hey, Joe Ahern's an electrician or Bob Ahern, you know what I mean? So we right. don't really, that's no, where it gets can't. a little complicated. But a lot of times, you know, who does, who's, do we go in the winter too? Like, who shovels your walks? Who does this, that, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it's tough. I, like, you, I try to refer them at least to agencies that won't cost them money. Right. Um, even there's a couple of good oil programs. Uh, last year we had, we had looked for some people that had a hard time with oil and, mm -hmm. you know, and every year it's a little bit different on that. Cause I know this year is gonna be really tough for that with the home heating oil. Right. right. And, and by the way, you know, what we, what, we, what we constantly say during these shows is, by the way, this show is an ad for the Callahan Center. Yep. If you, if you think you've got a heating, if you've got a heating problem, you need to talk to these folks. If, yeah, you, okay. if, you're, if, you're, if you need something, something fixed in your house, you need to talk to these folks. You know, the, the, one, yeah. of the, one of the hardest things, I think, well, for everybody, but especially for seniors, is there are a number of great programs for seniors, but they're all kind of scattered around the yeah. bureaucracy, you know, there's a fire department program, there's a heating program, there's a this and that, and you really want that ability to kind of make one call and, that, and then they kind of figure it out for you, right? And, and that, for that one call is pretty much the Callahan Center. Our social yeah. services staff are very well versed in the various other programs available throughout the city for anyone we even consider 55 and older. That's fantastic. So when we know of somebody who is struggling financially, our staff can help them apply for the low income heating energy and assistance program or for supplemental nutritional assistance. So there are various ways that we can help people who need a hand financially. That's, that's fantastic. A lot of the people we get are referred by you already. And mm -hmm. Grace, you've been fantastic. Anything I've needed, she's been right on. Whenever I ask her a question, she knows like that. I'm like, <laughs> I go, you sure? And she's like, I'm telling you. Then like a week later, I'm like, oh, Grace, you oh, were yeah, right. Sure really really <laughs> so as the fire marshal, how else, how else do you, because you said you were also, you, a piece of your job is dealing with seniors, right? Yes. How, how else do you, can, you, can you reach out to seniors? Because it's got to be hard, you know, well, the schools yeah. or the kids, 
You know where they are, yep. right? Yes. Right, but the seniors are kind of all over, and, if, and, and, and how do you reach them, and have you found that, that people are back to being open to seeing you now that with the COVID is kind of passed, but except that folks, I think our folks are the most sensitive yes. to still, I, I, I have a big sister who is six years older than me, so she's like say 69. She's still, she and her husband, they don't want to leave the house. Oh, they I, just don't want to leave the house. They don't, and, and, and I'm sure, Grace, you've seen too, the people that need the help the most are least likely to call. Right. right. You know what I mean? And that's unfortunate. And most people 65 and older, they don't really want to ask for help. I mean, my, my father-in-law lives off of Franklin Street, right. and uh, he fell over the winter. Oh, yeah. He had a small head bleed, it whacked his head pretty good, and. Uh, you know, of course, my, my wife's a nurse, and she's like, call 911. No, no, we're gonna drive ourselves to the hospital. So my mother-in-law drove him to the hospital, and I'm like, you drove him to the hospital? I'm like, you didn't call 911. I go, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but we try. And this, that's why this program's good, because this is an incentive for us to, to help, too. We, you know, we have something that we can help with that a lot of people know. They don't wanna change their batteries. It makes it simpler. Right. Helps people stay in their homes. Um, all great things, I think. That's why I'm passionate about it. And, you know, I've got everybody on board pretty much. We've been doing, like I said, quite a few of these, yeah. you know? And does, do all, does everyone at the fire department do them? Are there like designated folks that no, this just, is kind of a us, piece of their? It's the fire prevention division. So I see. it's like, it's a big division. There's four of us, but it sounds really Well, that's big. That's <laughs> no, very big. It's great. So we get out, all of us do them in between, like I said, anytime we have a, uh, anytime we, we do all the annuals and quarterlies and building inspections, plan review. Uh, we do that for the whole city, so yeah. we're, we're pretty busy, but we try to schedule everything out a few weeks so that we can still have time to do this and still have time to get into the schools and do the fire prevention stuff. Right. Because yeah. uh, the SAFE program really works hand in hand with, with what fire prevention is about. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, preventing harm and, and, and lessening risk. And uh, the, the kids have it a little bit different because the kids are more, they're not as susceptible to, to fire as far as getting injured in a fire, but. Mm -hmm. They're responsible for fifty percent of all of our arson fires in the United States. Wow! Fifty percent of all in, all intentionally set fires are from kids. But like you said, they're easy to get to. We get to these programs and do that. But right. as far as right, the, the, a lot of the people sixty-five and older do not want us to. You know, they have a routine. They've been doing it for a while. They like what they're doing, and you know. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they don't want you to disrupt their yeah to disrupt their household. But but I guess that's that that by the way goes to the, kind of the essence of this show, right? Yeah. Because they don't want to be calling like the bureaucracy, yeah. right? Yeah. And so the point of this is you say to yourself, well, geez, he seems like a friendly guy, Jim Aaron, right? Yeah. I, it's like I could actually talk to him, right? Yeah. yeah. So ju it, it's, ju it's just to give you the kind of, that kind of visibility, right? Yeah, no, this which is, is great. Which is, yeah, which has got to be a challenge. It's got to yeah. be a challenge. It so, is, I'm sure for you too, like, get, you know, as far as people that need it a lot of times don't come down to the Callahan Center. And, and, and that's a big part of why we're having this on the cable show, so that those who, don't venture out of their home, can have this information available to them mm -hmm. and they can just pick up the phone and call you or call us and we can put a number of different services in place. Oh, People great. don't have to try to struggle to do things alone. There are a lot of resources that they can tap into and that's what we're here for, uh, to try to make people's lives a little bit easier and safer. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, you think too. And if. If I go in and you only want the detectives and do you want me to get the heck out, that's all I do. I go in and I, I usually try to put them back right up where the old detectives were. Um, try to be as least invasive as I can. And you know, if, if you want to, then sometimes we'll talk about stuff. Hey, what do, you, do you, you know, do you have anybody that does this? Do you need a hand with that? If I'm there, I'll try to help with whatever I can. I only got a few minutes there, but um, most of the time people are pretty, pretty good with most of the stuff, so. And I know even things like recommending that people don't have loose sleeves on their bathrobes yeah. if they tend to cook first thing in the morning so yes. that if that is dangling down, it doesn't catch on the flame. I actually, you know, even just some little things that people just forget over time. I, it's right, I do sometimes, you know what I mean? And uh, what I did is I actually ordered some more of these little books that kind of have a lot of that in it. Again, mm. the stuff to remember, like you said, don't have loose clothing, don't stack stuff on your stove. Uh, keep a lid with you, you know, that type of thing. Never leave the stove unattended. That help it happens a lot, too. Yeah. That's usually not the, the, the 65 and older community. That's the, the middle of the road. They, I can go to the store and go get a, I you know, a whatever and leave this on high for about 10 minutes. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Yeah, that, that isn't such a good... <laughs> yeah. No, no. Because cooking fires are still the majority of all fires, mm. so pretty much. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah, they're about 50% of, of, of all the fires that we get. 
They're probably maybe even a little more in Framium, but as far as in general. And now you've been doing this for a long time. Has that, has the number of fires, the total number of fires, gone up or down, or is it constant? You know. Well, our fires have gone down, and I think that's to a, a, a good fire prevention yeah. uh, foundation. Yeah. And the other thing too is, whenever you sell your home now, you have to. It's mandatory to sell your house. You have to have your smoke detectors checked. Right, mm -hmm. makes a huge. It's difference. It's huge, and and really, I think now. It's about 90% or a little bit higher of homes in you know, Massachusetts have smoke detectors in them. But really, the homes that don't have smoke detectors there in are, them. There are people. Yeah. yeah the uh, people yeah. have just been there, Frank and Mary. They've been in their house forever. They're never going to move. They're not, yeah. They don't want to sell. Yeah. But unfortunately, the ones without smoke detectors are responsible for about 30 or 40% of the fires. Right. So that little percent that doesn't have them, it's because there's, no, there's no notification. Mm. I didn't right. know that either. Yeah. yeah. But that's a really. That's a startling statistic. Oh, there's yeah. a ton of them. CDC right. has most of these stats right on mm -hmm. online. Right. Wow. But, but yeah, because you figure, what, and what percentage of the houses do you think at this point have a smoke detector? Over 90%. That's what the books say. I mean, a couple of my books are from 2015 era, but right. that's what it was. It was up over 90%, and then it said that- So 10% of the houses are basically responsible for 40% of the fires, because they're the Just ones under 40%, that's Because they're what the they ones were. without the smoke detectors. Wow. It's crazy, huh? Just not having these little, so that's how important they really are. Oh, well, that's a good point, though, because it's not a matter necessarily of, certainly you don't want to be doing something that's going to start, that's going to start a fire, but it's catching it. Yeah. I remember talking a little, you know, that, that, so I, in, in an earlier life, I was on the city council in Marlboro, so we kind of had to learn about a lot of this stuff. So we yeah. talked about the, 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 <coughs> I think the, measure, the measure of whether you're, you can really respond as the fire department. I think they were saying six minutes, that, that, that from the time that you're leaving the station. No, yeah. from the time the call comes in. To the time the call comes in. To, to, the, to the time you guys actually get to the fire was like six minutes. And it's, it's fast, Framium's, yeah. Framium's is actually right around five. Wow. wow. We're pretty much everywhere, except for, there's a couple of sections way up, uh, Nixon, Edmonds, it's probably another yeah. minute or two, just because now that we've also added the road calming measures just and the speed say, bumps right? and things, it, get over those it does speed slow bumps. us down a little bit, but not, not drastically, right. maybe 30 right. seconds or something. but. Can I put out another question there, knowing that um, with the high cost of fuel, gas, electricity, I know that uh, space heaters, some people uh, we will resort to them, and I know yes. they, they can be very, <clears throat> very um, dangerous. tricky. Um, so uh, yes. I, I don't what, like what advice can you give about Don't them? use them. No, just don't kidding. Space <laughs> That's what, there, there are some safe ones now, and, and we actually have a couple in our house because the back porch gets cold because it used to be a, a uh, yeah. three season now it's a four season and, and it always gets cold so we do have them the, most of them do do turn off when they tip over so you got to make sure it's not an old one if okay. don't use one from 20 or 30 years ago because if it still works i know everything works from 20 or 30 years ago but now that's the, the bad news that's the bad news it still works. yes that's it's, right the new ones won't it last that long it all, and it'll keep going <laughs> even when it falls right. Off. Oh. right exactly those yeah. ones tipped over and they keep going yeah. Um, and not to keep it on overnight, not to leave yes. it unattended. Any other recommendations? Um, you know, stay with the ones that are just the regular heated ones with a fan. Believe it or not, the ones that look like little radiators, mm -hmm. those started more fires than any of the no other kidding. ones combined for a while. Wow. That's what we learned in the fire academy. Wow. The fire, Why is the that? F because the, it turns into, an, like, a, it's full of oil. And the little switch that turns it off and on, if you set it to a certain temperature, that switch wears out, so then it continues to heat the oil inside, and they usually burst. Oh and then my. when they burst, they catch on fire, and well, then yeah. now it's an oil-fed fire. Wow. So that's why they, uh, those, those were the worst. I was very surprised at that, because I figured those would be the safest. Yeah. The ones I would have thought were the dangerous, the ones with the metal rods that you'd see you know, heat up and stuff. Right. But um, th this was back in 2001 when I went to the academy, so it might have changed a little or made them a little safer, but okay. they used to be the worst. Because I know no matter how much you might recommend somebody not do something, if that's what they're familiar with, often they will still do it. But at least maybe the recommendation of get a more recently yeah. made one that has more one of the safety we'll measures the in safeties. place and just follow all the guidelines, don't have it connected to extension cords or yes. you know, anything that draws that much furniture amperage. right next to it. Yeah. Yeah. Try to keep it out. Try to keep it on a hard surface. Mm -hmm. You know, don't. I mean, you have rugs. It's not really. You know, rugs can catch if it tips over. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, the other ones have that button on the bottom, so when they do tip, mm -hmm. um, 
and, and just like you said, don't leave it on overnight. Yeah. A lot of it's common sense, but it's just like anything, it's complacency, you know? Yeah. And this is, uh, because and you, we don't, all because do you don't realize so much of a risk it is. It's like the stove. Mm -hmm. You don't realize it, as opposed to just about everything else that's in the house. This is something that could really get you in trouble. Yes. Yeah. If you're not paying attention to it. Yes. Right? We only have less than a couple of minutes left. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on in terms of educating seniors about how they could be safer in their home from uh -huh. fire, from carbon monoxide? Um, oh, we didn't even actually go over the carbon monoxide, but the, uh, it's, it's, the big thing is really getting the detectors in there. Mm -hmm. And the carbon monoxide, is, like these are great, that's why we install these for the most part, unless you already have carbon monoxide detectors. Yeah. Uh, because these do have both technologies in them. The, mm -hmm. uh, but it, as far as just the detectors, is a, there's a lot of other stuff, so if we have a couple minutes, it'd be tough to go into everything. But yeah. I, I forgot I should have touched on the carbon monoxide detectors a little and that's bit. So. A, but they're a big deal. I remember yeah. clients will sometimes will, will talk about, well, you know, what happens with doing estate planning? Well, what happens if we both die at the same time? And I'll tell people, you know, in my entire life, I've been practicing for 45 years, that's only happened once, yeah. and it was actually a young couple. Mm -hmm. and, it was, and it was a husband that got home, and the wife was asleep, and the kids were asleep, and he apparently didn't shut off the car, and he went oh, in, I heard, yeah. and everybody died. And everybody died, and it was it was all about. It's like that. What you said. It's like the detection. Was it Sudbury? I, I had heard the something. It's in this area. It was in this area. It was one. Yeah. It was probably almost twenty years ago, it was a, or maybe yeah, a while yeah, ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. But it was like what a tragedy. Mm -hmm. So yes, thank you very much for doing You're welcome. this, Grace. Yes. Once again, thank you very much. It's wonderful to be back in the studio. Yes, it's great right. To as be opposed to being remote. And so we'll. And and I I know our ratings will go up as a result of your. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sure that we'll be back to invite you. So if, thanks a million. Jim, if they for drop, I don't know. It oh no. <laughs> well, then you're out. All right. So thank and Grace, thank you for finding these great guests. Thank you, folks. Uh, we I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you.